Today we're taking a look at the latest trade speculation regarding the Toronto Maple Leafs, Montreal Canadiens, and the Minnesota Wild. We also saw a potential serious injury to one of the top players in the trade bait board leading into the deadline, and we have some sad news from Russia to report on as well. We'll discuss all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of news to talk about today. Uh, first up, I just want to touch quickly on the sad news that was reported out of Russia. Timur Fatzidanov, uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, uh, or certainly it's a tough name to pronounce, uh, unfortunately had a bit of a freak accident on the ice, uh, took a puck to the head area, but looked like it might have got him like more like in the jaw, um, neck area. Some say it might have got him in the carotid artery. Uh, don't know exactly. The, the video is really difficult to say. Uh, anyways, he went down immediately. You could tell he was in a lot of distress. He was taken away on a stretcher. Um, and unfortunately, he ended up passing away afterwards in hospital. I believe he was in hospital for a couple of days before um, he ended up succumbing to the injury. So certainly some very sad news. It's a routine play that you see all the time. It was, uh, you know, the uh, play coming up the ice. Puck was shot. It wasn't even shot like super hard. It was like an ordinary uh, shot that came up high. Got him like something you see happen often and players walk away with, you know, really not much more than a bruise or a small cut or something like that. It's not something that you, you really think of as being a potential fatal accident, but it indeed was, and it certainly serves as a healthy reminder as to what can happen on the ice and just how dangerous the sport of hockey can sometimes be. So I'd like to pass along our thoughts uh, to his family and friends, and hopefully we don't see something like that happen again. But unfortunately, there is risk involved with any sport that's high impact like that. On to some other news and another injury type of uh, relation here. Uh, we saw another slop shot to the face, except this one doesn't appear to have any kind of those extra consequences that we just talked about. But uh, Taylor Hall, who is one of the most talked about uh, players on the NHL trade bait board, it likely gets moved by the deadline uh, from the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, took a slap shot. It looks like he got him right in the face. I just saw the highlights here just shortly before recording this video. Uh, it was basically friendly fire from his own uh, teammate. It looked like Colin Miller taking the shot. Uh, he was battling in front of the net. Looks like P.K. Subban of the Devils was behind him. Uh, you know, the normal routine you see from defensemen kind of cross-checking or pushing into the back of the forward, um, trying to create a screen in front. And then he started to go down a bit. And as he went down, he got the puck straight in the face area. So hopefully he's okay. I don't know if that's going to require any kind of serious injury. I only saw the highlights. So, of course, I wasn't tuned into that game specifically before recording this video. So I don't know the exact uh, outcome or if there's been any further updates provided. But check the pinned comment down below. If I can get any more information on his situation, I'll update things down below. But I could certainly, you know, potentially create a situation that could cause him maybe to not be traded after all. As I mentioned as well, we're going to take a look at the NHL trade deadline potential here for three teams. We're going to start with the Minnesota Wild. Now, they're a team that's been uh, pretty much a surprise team this year and doing much better than many people expect. I know myself included in that. Uh, young rookie Kaprizov has certainly really made the team much more fun and exciting to watch and has really helped them be a more dynamic offensive team. One player that's not having such a great season is longtime forward and veteran Zach Parise, of course, along with Ryan Suter, who had signed those identical 13-year contracts way back when that still have four years left on them. And we know last year at the NHL trade deadline, the Wild actually came relatively close to trading Parise. At that point, uh, the team obviously wasn't doing as well, and I do believe because he does have a no move clause that he had talked to GM Bill Guerin about possibly moving and there was really close to striking a deal with the Islanders and I know Andrew Ladd's contract was coming back the other way and there were some other pieces involved but they couldn't get it exactly worked out so that both teams were happy so they never pulled the trigger on the deal and obviously Parise remained with the Minnesota Wild, of course, you know, he was born and raised in Minnesota, certainly uh, a place he loves to play, but was looking to have more success. And even though the team's having more success now, it's being reported by Michael Russo of The Athletic that the Wild are still considering trying to trade Parise, even though it's going to be very difficult with the contract that he comes with. They might be willing to take back one or two other not-so-favorable contracts in return to make that happen. 
Ideally, if they take back other bad contracts, they would prefer them to have shorter term, of course, so they can be out from underneath them sooner or might be able to buy them out a little bit quicker as well. I know when it comes to Parise's contract, uh, I know the final three years, the salary really drops down. Two years from now, he'll only be making $2 million, and then the final two years, it's a $1 million each. Of course, those years were basically tagged on to level out the AAV and make it a little bit lower and more manageable. Um, obviously, when teams were doing those deals back when they were legal, they didn't really care too much about the term. The last couple of years, there was such a small amount owing that if they didn't play and fulfill that contract or they were injured or whatever, they really didn't care too much. If they got 10 or 11 years out of them, they were quite content. We've seen Parise be a healthy scratch this year and not quite be the player, like the go-to guy that they've uh, used him as in the past. So it is being reported, like I said, by Michael Russo, the athletic, that they are shopping him. Obviously, they need his consent to trade him, so it's difficult to say how uh, much he'll work with them, given the fact that the team is doing better, and it's like it's his hometown team, so I'm not sure at this point how interested he is in moving on, but based on how he's being utilized, you know, he might be willing to make a change, but uh, it very well could be a scenario that if we see something happen at this deadline, it's not going to be Andrew Ladd this time, wouldn't be the Islanders. Of course, Lou Lamarillo, his old GM in New Jersey, was interested in uh, reacquiring him, which made uh, that deal possible. But that's really not something the Islanders, I don't think, can entertain right now. So it would have to be a different team with other bad contracts involved. And it's really hard to say if there would be a fit somewhere. Else. But Bill Guerin is trying to see what he can do to make that happen. Uh, I don't think we're going to see the Wild be overly aggressive at the deadline, though. Even though there's a good chance they could make the playoffs, I don't think they're going to be a team to really go out and add. Uh, they're kind of a surprise story at this point. Uh, so I think they're going to be a situation they don't want to want to you know part with any future assets to maybe make a, a short run here they, they understand what they are they're building still for the future we could see a matt dumba trade but that's likely something that waits till the offseason as well unless the right offer comes along and gets bill gear that top center that he's really looking for but we'll see but if there's uh, money deals out of minnesota it could be parise involved if the right contracts coming back and everything works out we'll see going to be a tough deal to do but they're certainly trying to see if there's a fit now on to montreal and toronto here who both had comments today from their gms let's start with the habs and mark bergevin who made some comments today to the media i also saw reports from Renaud lavois of tva sports as well as eric engels of sportsnet kind of speculating on what they might do here ahead of the playoffs now when mark bergevin was, uh, was speaking today he made it clear that he doesn't really see this team being something that they need to go out and make a, a big a big blockbuster type of trade that's not something that we expect here for Montreal and basically because of the limited cap space it would have to be money going out in order to bring money in and it also does not look like they plan at least based on his comments to go out and get a top four defenseman and replace Ben Sherrod who's going to be out six to eight weeks he said it's likely going to be closer to the six weeks than the eight so he's likely going to be back before the end of the regular season so at this point unless there's some setbacks or things change uh, he's going to be able to play again before the playoffs and they don't see themselves going out to find somebody to replace him and have him on long-term injury reserve to the end of the regular season. So that's going to make things a little bit more complicated uh, as far as making moves go. Like I said, there would have to be money going out. Now, Eric Engels is reporting that he sees the team going after a depth center. Obviously, a lot of their center ice men outside of Deneau are really young and inexperienced. They could use somebody there to, uh, to kind of enhance things a little bit when it comes to the experience side and a depth defenseman as well. If they do add on a blue line, they'd likely have to move something out to make the space. And at the same time, it doesn't have to be somebody who can log big minutes for them like Sherratt does. It can be a lower level kind of guy, but maybe somebody that is kind of a similar style of play, somebody who can play tough minutes, play a physical style, get in your face, and you know, that kind of more of a defensive game. And he suggested maybe looking to these Senators and Eric Branson, who's a pending unrestricted free agent, likely doesn't head back to Ottawa next year. They would certainly entertain trading him, um, you know, on a on a short-term basis here until he becomes a free agent. Uh, he could fit with the Habs as a rental. Good Branson, if they moved out something that would be somebody like a Paul Byron or an Arturi Lekkinen or something to that nature, it could be enough to kind of offset things and make the space. So like, that's the most likely contracts that they do move out if they decide to move a roster player to make more of a hockey trade uh, to add some extra depth would be Byron or Lekkinen according to angles. And it makes sense too. I mean, the only thing with Byron, it comes with a little bit more term whereas Lekkinen's contract's expiring this year. So certainly Lekkinen might be the more likely, more attractive piece that could move, and they could try to, have a, like I said, attract a depth center or maybe a, a, a defenseman, but more of a depth defenseman and not a top defenseman 
like, like a Branson or comparable, somebody who can give you those tough minutes till Sherratt gets back, and somebody you don't mind sitting on the sidelines once he gets there. But it doesn't sound like Victor Mete plans to be the answer here, according to Mark Bergevin, to uh, kind of replace those minutes. So interesting to see what his future holds here as well. Now, we also saw some interesting comments from Kyle Dubas of the Toronto Maple Leafs today, talking about their potential plans ahead of the deadline. And he kind of showed more of his cards today, which is something you don't often see. But he did give uh, some information to the fact that there's certainly the, the position they're most likely to want to add to would be the forward position. We saw them place Jimmy VC on waivers today. Of course, Paul Byron of the Hams is on waivers as well today. So they could end up vacating the team through that method if they are claimed and picked up by other franchises. But certainly uh, that bottom six forward position to really secure things would be ideal. Now, he didn't really allude to the fact that it had to be a bottom six guy. It could be a middle six or maybe even somebody who can play up and down your lineup. But certainly there's been enough names out there that Toronto's been linked to, anywhere from Ricard Raquel to Mikhail Granlin uh, or other options out there on the market, even Taylor Hall to some degree. Obviously, you know, a lot of these players would have involved their existing teams retaining a big chunk of salary. But he also made it clear that he's not opposed to trading a first round pick and he's not opposed to trading a top prospect essentially they're kind of one of the same idea first round pick is equivalent to a top prospect in most cases anyway so he's certainly not opposed to doing that so we had previously heard reports about uh you know when it comes to like a guy like ricard raquel in anaheim that you know moving a guy like rodeo and amir of their 2020 first round pick might be what it takes to get the deal done along with a secondary piece uh, and of course he's got some prospect defensemen as well he sounds like he's ready to go for it, go all in, and feels like this is their really a good opportunity for them to go deep and far into the playoffs and try to win a Stanley Cup. So I do suspect them to be aggressive here and try to add a forward. Now, like I said, a guy like Granlin could be a good rental player, uh, could play up and down their lineup, second line, third line, could be a fit in multiple spots there. Hard to say which direction they do end up going. Uh, I know there was previously talked about Eric Stahl, but maybe being a, a guy they would target, but I don't see that happening. Reports are that Eric Stahl might not be overly interested in coming to Canada because of the quarantine. Uh, so obviously he'd have to spend two weeks uh, isolated in a hotel, and that doesn't sound like something he's interested in doing. And he does have a form of a no-trade clause, so he does have some say over where he goes. So as much as he might be interested normally, this is a different year. And if he's going to be traded, I think the most likely spot right now seems to be Carolina, where he can go play with his brother and go back to the franchise where he used to play for a long time. So I guess we'll see on that. But as far as the Leafs go, Dubas is certainly interested in making a move to add to the forward depth, and he's not afraid to throw future assets into the mix here to make it happen. So let me know of all the guys that we've talked about in the forward group, especially for the Leafs, who do you think they should target, and what prospects would you be willing to part with in order to make it happen? I mean, we could throw Nick Robertson in the mix. It could be Amirov. It could be Lilgren. It could be Sandine. Let me know what you think, and we'll discuss further in the comments. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.